gave to her husband with her and he ate Amen. the word of the Lord is blessed my Lord, my Lord. I want to talk to you for a few moments today from the subject limitations for the liberated There are limitations for those who have been liberated. What am I trying to say? I'll, I'll, I'll take it slow. Is that God has set us free. And those who he sets free are free indeed. But even though we are free we still have to follow what God tells us to follow. Yeah. We are to do what he tells us to do. Yeah. And we're not to do what he commands us nah. not to do. Yeah. So even though we have been liberated, that means we're free from the burden of sin, yeah. there are still certain guidelines that we have to hold to as the body of Christ. In this text, we find the biblical account of the fall of man. This is the breaking of what we call the Edenic covenant. There's some rich teaching in this text, and I explained to you that we're going to look at it from a theological standpoint. And what theology is, it is the study of God. Uh -huh. So what we want to look at in this text is how God is moving and what his expectations are from his, from his people then and for us today. And I want to make it plain that this particular writing is to Israel. So he is making some things plain to Israel who is coming into being a nation. Because before Israel became a nation, they were a nomadic people. Yeah. I'm just setting the stage here. Yeah. You know, if you remember geography, yeah. back in grade school, a nomadic people moved from place yeah. to place yeah. to place. Yeah. Now he's getting ready to establish Israel yeah. as a nation. I got some Bible study years here. He's getting ready to establish them as a nation, and he needs to lay down the guidelines of what they should do and what they should not do. So what he, what we say here in the Garden of Eden, they can they can do whatever they want to do. They can eat from every tree that's in the garden. But one tree. Yeah. And they choose to eat from the tree that they shouldn't eat from. But see, we have to be take a step back. When God places limitations on his people, he does it for our good. Yeah. 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 It's not a punishment. Amen. He's 
doing it for your good. God wants us to abstain from all appearances of evil. He wants us to avoid being troublemakers. He wants us to avoid being profane and dealing with vain babbling. He wants us to be transformed. He wants us to be patient in our tribulations. He wants us to be steadfast, unmovable, yes. and always abounding in the word. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. He puts limitations on yes. us yes. for our good. Yes. Yes. But see, when we look at this text, <clears throat> God gave a direct commitment. He gave a direct command. Yes. There's no questions about what he was saying. He simply said, don't touch it. Amen. I don't know how they got that mixed up. <laughs> You're not supposed to touch the tree in the middle of the garden. However, the serpent and we know that it represents Satan. Like, yeah. But the text don't say it's Satan. Amen. Yeah. All right, now. So before you get so far, before ahead of yourself and say Satan did it, Satan did that, the text never yeah, states yeah. that it was yeah. Satan. Mm -hmm. The text states that it was a serpent. Yeah. Yeah. We know what it represents, but when you're teaching it, you got to teach it correctly. Amen. Yeah. And the Bible says it was a serpent. Yeah. But see, I'm a, I want you. I want to throw this in parenthetically. That there are a lot of serpents in our lives. Amen. There are a lot of serpents in the church. But the serpents can take many forms. There are demons. There are other people who are influences, and sometimes the serpent can be the man in the mirror. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. But see, the serpent, mm -hmm. <coughs> the serpent is a deceiver. Mm -hmm. He wants you to think one thing and make you do another thing. Yes. Amen. Yes. See, here in the text, the serpent hints to the fact that God is holding out on Adam and Eve. Amen. He is keeping them away from this tree. Yes. That I call is a false declaration. The devil specializes in giving people false declarations. The devil is an expert in false declarations. That's why you gotta be in the word of God. You test the spirit by the spirit. What are you talking about, Pastor? See, the, the word and the spirit go hand in hand. So if you got a devil talking about God, you better check it by the Spirit. Yes, yes. yes. yes sir. Oh, yeah. The devil specializes in false declarations. Amen. But number two, the devil specializes in giving you false hopes. Uh -huh. He said, you're, you're not going to die. Your eyes are just be open. You'll be able to see things from a new and clearer perspective. False hopes. Let me tell you this again. The devil specializes in false declarations and giving false hope. But see, the devil, see, I'm going to tell you something. The devil will paint you a Picasso. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, he will. Yes. The devil will make it look like it came from glory. Yeah. Come on. They might even package it up with a few scriptures and a few hallelujahs. But the job of the devil, Sister Shirley, is to make it look good. We would all know he was coming if he was a man in red tights. But see, God, but see, the devil comes in your greatest desire. Yes, yes, yes he does. He yes, makes he it does. real, yes. real, real sweet. Yes, yes. It might come with some muscles. Sad <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh -huh. It might come with a fat bank account. Uh -huh. But he makes it real sweet. Yes, he does. If you partake mm -hmm. of the tree, mm -hmm. you're just going to be like God. Yeah. And see, God, he don't really want you to be like him. He offers them false results. So the devil specializes in false declarations, in false hopes, and false results. When he presents that case to us and to Adam and Eve, they start to doubt God because they take in their mind yeah. And their heart off the word of God. They forgot who God was yeah. because they weren't spending time in the word. Yeah. They weren't spending time in prayer. And the moment you take your eyes off God, the devil pops in. Amen. 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 But see, when we begin to doubt God, and when we begin to listen what the devil has to say, we let our personal desires take over. Amen. See, I told the, the, the Sunday school class, see, they already wanted to touch the tree. Yeah. Amen. They, wanted, they already wanted, because God said no. no. Amen. Think about it. They had every fruit that we have. Yeah. Strawberries, raspberries, then like the Mississippi watermelons, <laughs> the yellow ones and the red ones. They had grapes, they had pineapples, they had all they could choose from, but they chose what God said not to touch. Yeah. Because they had false declarations, they had false hopes, and they were expecting false results because they stopped looking at God and they started looking at themselves. It was seen that Adam and Eve are guilty of some of the same things we are guilty of yes. today in the church. Amen. 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 Yes. Check yes. this out. Come with me now. They were guilty of hearing God, mm -hmm. but not following God. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. yeah. They were guilty of allowing ungodly influences to turn them away from God. Yes. All right. They were guilty of outright disobedience. Yes. Disobedience leads to shame. Amen. 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 Adam and Eve, they failed to recognize the importance of the limitations mm -hmm. that God had placed on them. Amen. And so many times we fail to recognize the limitations mm -hmm. that God puts on us. Why? Because God has allowed you so long to do it. To do it. Because he not because he wanted you to do it, because he wanted you That's to repent. Right. That's Amen. Right. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 He's not co-signing on your mess. He's allowing you time to clean up your mess. Don't think because you're still living, he's co-signing. Oh, yeah. He's giving us opportunities to get it right. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's God. Amen. But see, I don't I said I don't want us to look at this story from a 21st century perspective. Because when we do that, we lose a lot that's in the text. But see, we must realize that initially, let me take you back to seminary. Initially, this was for Israel, like I stated to you. And it was for Israel in what we call the oral tradition. Because there wasn't any Bibles. Yes. Amen. There wasn't no King James Version back then for those who are sold out Baptists. <laughs> <laughs> they had to do it by memory. Yes. Amen. So think it was when the feasts would come around. Mm -hmm. You being the head of your family, 
You would stand before your family after the meal, and you would say, in the beginning, yeah. God created. Yeah. Yeah. And you would go from the beginning of Genesis to the end. Yeah. By memory. Yeah. In your mind. This is how, that's having the word in your heart. Yeah. 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 <laughs> how many of us can do Genesis from the, from the front to the back? Uh, Ooh. Mm -hmm. I can't do it either. <laughs> But this is in the oral tradition. This biblical story educates us still in today's world. Like I said, it was for Israel. We have to go back and we have to look at how it benefited Israel. See, we look at it. Let me make it plain. In the beginning, when God created and God did this and God did that, it's painting God as the creator. Amen. Amen. It don't matter. I know that's not correct English. It don't matter if it's not scientifically accurate. Significant at all. The point of the story is that God made it all. And Ray, guess what? It was good. And God created Mankind, I know we trying to put it on the ladies, fellas, but guess what? The man was standing right there when she ate the fruit. Ain't it just like me to sit there and let it happen? Uh oh. The man gonna be mad today. But he was right there, standing right next to her when the serpent was talking to her, and he didn't open up his mouth. Am I in the word? In the word. In the word. But it paints the picture that God is the creator yes. of all things. Mm -hmm. My Lord. He is the creator of man and woman. Amen. And let me tell you something. There are no big eyes and no little U's when it comes to creation. Amen. Because when you translate the word Adam, Adam means mankind. Mm -hmm. Both man and woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He gave both man and woman dominion over the earth. Amen. Amen. So he created the heavens and the earth. He created man and woman. And what God did if we step back before he said anything, he brought community out of chaos. When God steps in, mm -hmm. chaos has to flee. Amen. What we must understand, that when we're looking at there being limitations on us, even though we are set free, mm -hmm. we must understand one thing, Brother Solomon, mm -hmm. is that God dictates what should be done, mm -hmm. and he dictates what should not be done. Amen. It is our job simply to obey. obey. Not to question. Not to put your idea on the table. Not to go talk to the crowd about it. But he wants you to be bad about it. That simply means he wants you to do what he told you to do. When God said leave Chicago, he didn't see to give you no other option. He said, either you go or you don't go. Either you obey or you don't obey. Well, I, you know, God is bigger than me. I'm a big man. But I'm going to obey. God. God dictates what we should do and what we should not do. Understand this. When we step back, God was not trying to hold them back. Amen. God made the decision. He told them, and it was their responsibility to do it. If God is telling you to start that ministry, oh my God. God made the decision. He don't need you to do it. But he chose you to be with him when he does it. Amen. Your job is to be there. Amen. And do 
the work in excellence. In order to do this, the church needs to become more committed. We need to submit and commit. Say that to yourself. We need to submit, submit. and commit. And commit. We, are, we, know, we, are, we know that there are rewards for being Christian. But God never promised us that we would be comfortable. Amen. Look at Jesus. Jesus was God. God put on flesh. And they didn't, well, let me say, the church folks didn't make it easy for him. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. If the church folk didn't make it easy for Jesus, why do you think they're going to make it easy for you? Amen. 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 God never promised comfort. But God did say that he would provide for your needs. Amen. Amen. But you do have limitations to what you can do. Yes. Amen. He said he'd take care of you. Yes, he did. He promised. Yes, he did. He yes. promised never to leave you for, or forsake you. Yes. Yes. But he never said it was going to be easy. Yes. Matter of fact, he tells you that it's going to be tough. He, told you it was be he said, deny yourself. Yes. Take up your cross. That means there's going to be some suffering when you follow him. Yeah. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him, not just on Sunday from 11 to 1.30, but yeah. every day yeah. of your life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to throw this in, and you get mad at me if you, if you want to. There's no salvation without a cross. Amen. 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 All right. Yes, yes. Amen. There is no salvation Without suffering. They beat Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, they took him to a mock trial. Yeah. Yes, they, did. Yes. they had a mock trial. Yes. Yes. They took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. To judgment hall. Yes. Yes. They beat him beyond recognition. Yes. His body was like burger meat. Yes. He had lost so much blood, most folk died before they get to the cross. Yes. He had lost so much blood, he couldn't carry his own cross. Yeah. But they crucified him. Yeah. Wait, say, when they crucified him, it's not like it's not like pretty wood. Oh my God. Amen. The psalm says, on a hill oh, far away stood an old oh, rugged cross. They nailed him to an old rugged cross. <laughs> and when they nailed him to the cross, they stretched him out. Dislocating both shoulders, tearing the funny bone nerve. You know you don't like it when you hit your funny bone. Just imagine if your funny bone hurt all the time. His body was messed up. They pierced his feet, and in order to breathe, he had to push his mangled body up the old rugged cross. Jesus didn't have comfort. Why are we expecting comfort? But see, the limitations that are placed on us are to make us a more disciplined people. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. When I grew up, I could, my mother and father woke me up at 6 o'clock in the morning every day for school. I got to the point where I could get my daddy to get out of bed. But what that did, it started to make me disciplined. Because now, what, what, let me take a step back. When I was in college, I could get up for 8 o'clock classes. Because I was disciplined. Okay. And I got up for 8 o'clock classes because I was expecting to get a job that started at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Preparing for the job. <laughs> So now that I'm a man, I can get up and be at work on time because my parents made me disciplined. Yeah. Amen. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
The reason why so many undisciplined children right here is because the parents ain't doing nothing. But God disciplines us to make us better. Yes. So that we can be able to handle the task that he is giving us. What am I saying, Ray? That you can walk in your purpose correctly. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And walk in your own purpose. Stop trying to be somebody else. Amen. Be who God called you to be. We talk about this all the time, but how does a tree give God glory? It gives God glory by simply being a tree. Yeah. You don't see no tree trying to be no squirrel. Yeah. It glorifies God by being what God called it to be. Yeah. We glorify God by being what God called us to be. Yeah. And being what God called us to be for the glory of God. Stop giving him a half effort. Yes. You want him to fully wake you up in the morning? Yes. Fully. Fully. Uh, amen. What if he woke you up the same way you give him praise? Mm -hmm. Some folks still get fed. <laughs> but God wants to make us a disciplined people. But also, God wants to bring us close to him. Amen. Why is that? Because See, when you understand what the discipline kept you from. Yeah. When mama spanked you. What it kept you from. Yes, yes. The jail time. Oh, yeah. It kept you from. That murder that somebody was plotting on you. It kept you from. Because you weren't there. You weren't doing it. That's right. You understand that the person that disciplines you doesn't. For your good Amen. and because they love you. Amen. So he tries to say, the limitations that God puts on us are because he loves us. Yes. He's not going to discipline somebody he don't love. Yes. All right, you got quiet, you got quiet. All right. When God spanks you, you ought to say thank you. All right, now. Yes. Because he cares. Yes. So it makes us the more disciplined people. It brings us close to him, and it keeps us out of trouble. Right. Amen. So what's the point? What is the purpose of God saying no to some things and saying yes to others? What is the reason that God puts the limitation on his body? Number one, we talked about it. It makes us disciplined. If God wants to make us disciplined, that simply tells us that he doesn't want the body of Christ acting any type of way. Hallelujah. How are we going to draw folks to Christ? Come on now. My Lord. Come on, yes. If we don't act like Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. How are we going to draw people to Christ and we're acting just like the people we're trying to draw in? Amen. Amen. Jesus wants us to be not only his followers, but his disciples. Yes. And only disciples can make more disciples. A disciple loves God. Amen. And walks by faith. Faith is the substance of things hopeful. The evidence of things not seen. But let me throw this in parenthetically. You cannot get there on somebody else's testimony. You cannot achieve faith by what your grandmother did. You cannot achieve faith by what your mother did. You have to get to know him for yourself. I use this example this morning. Is that I know Janice Ellis Smith. 
And there are people that know of Deaconess Janice Ellis Smith. Mm -hmm. But they are the person in this church that knows her intimately. Amen. That is her husband. He knows her good parts, her bad parts, her frustrating parts, and her happy parts. He knows her intimately. Amen. It is our job to know God intimately. Yeah. Amen. You have to start making it a priority. We all do. Of knowing God for ourselves. Yeah. That means you got to spend some time daily talking to him. Yeah. You got to spend some time daily in his word. You got to spend some time daily reflecting on the goodness of Jesus. You got to spend some time daily looking back over that word again. Yeah. You got to know him. Yeah. Intimately. Yeah. You know how it was? When you were younger, back when you had the other type of phones, you was talking to that special someone, and you'd be on the phone late. You still awake? <laughs> Somebody got that testimony out there. <laughs> you still awake? I'm still here. <laughs> what you were doing? You were no, 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 no. just kids. But what you were doing, you were spending intimate time with one another. So what you got to do, Sister Shirley? Hey, God, you still there? <laughs> Shirley, I'm still here. <laughs> you need something? <laughs> You have to spend some time with him. Yeah. For yourself. Yeah. Getting close to God is the most important thing you could ever do in your life. Amen. It makes us more disciplined. But limitations that God place on us. Keep us close to him. Amen. I remember when Ellie was little. He looked hard headed. Mm -hmm. He looked, looked hard headed. Ellie. Told him to do something. He was a baby. He stood there. I said, boy, go do what you got to do. He stayed there. His grandmother, Sister Millie Tillman, God rest her soul, said, you know what, Larry? You got to put some fire. <laughs> you got to put some fire under that boy. She said, not because you're trying to hurt him, That's right. not to but you're doing it for his good. What will happen is if you if he's not disciplined, mm -hmm. he may run out into the street. Yes. You will tell him to stop and he'll keep going. But if you light some fire under him, yes. he will stop when you say stop. Yes. What am I trying to say? As my son grew older and he acknowledged the discipline that was given to him, he knew that the discipline given to him was given to him to keep him alive. And he is appreciative because his parents tried to keep him alive. So he understands that what we did, we did for his good. Amen. Amen. And that draws you closer. Amen. So you realize that God kept you away from some mess. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. He kept you away from some mess. Yes, he did. For your good. Yes. It shouldn't push you away. Yes. It should bring you closer. Yes. Thank, you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We have to learn. And no matter what comes out, we have to follow God as he leads us. We should fear him. Not be scared of him, but have reverence yes. of him. We have to learn to keep his commandments, even when they contradict what we want to do. Yes, yes. 
we must learn to be better servants. We're not here because we got a title. We're not here for folks to see us. We are here to serve one another. And we are to follow God only. We have to revere him as Lord, and we have to obey him. Somebody say your obedience is better than your sacrifice. Last but not least, and I, I'm going to leave you alone. <clears throat> the limitations that God puts on us prevents us from shaming ourselves. Amen. We find trouble in the works of the flesh. But we find peace in the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace. If we fail to do what God says do, if we fail to be disciplined, if we fail to draw closer to him, it will bring us shame. But also, it will, it, it will have us end up in a place that we don't want to be. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the limitations for the liberated, here are the applications for it. We have to know God as the creator of all. We have to follow God no matter what. This is, this is what's in the text. God gives us freedom, but we cannot do any and everything. Amen. We can worship, but we ought to worship him only. Yes. Even though we fall short Hallelujah. and we sin, we are still called to be faithful. Yes. yes. Because he already knows that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we repent of our sins, but we are to remain faithful. So when God places limitations on his people, it helps us to be disciplined. It keeps us close to him. And it keeps us out of trouble. Yes. The songwriter said, God sent his son. Yes. They called him Jesus. On, he came yes. to love, yes. heal, yes. and forgive. Yes. Yes. He lived yes. and he died yes. to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth a living dust. Because he lives, all I have to do is strive to seek him for myself. In the midst of the storm, I'm going to seek him for myself. When trouble comes your way, you got to seek him for yourself. When you are tempted and when you are tried, you have to seek him for yourself. If you're hurting in your body, you got to Seek him for yourself. The songwriter says, ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. If you need a healing in your life, he will carry you through. If you're broken in your spirit, he will carry you through. If you feel like him, all hope is gone. Yeah. He will. Yeah. 
carry you through if you're wounded in your heart, if you're wounded in your body, he will carry you through if you're distressed or depressed, he will carry you through if you're joyless, turn to Jesus, he will carry you through if you feel like you're all alone, he will carry you through one thing I desire and that I will sing after is that I might dwell in the house of the Lord just call on him just seek him just lean on him depend on him until your change comes wait on the Lord be of good courage he shall strengthen thine heart on the Lord. Don't worry about what folk are doing. Don't worry about what they're saying. You just wait on them until your change comes. If you trust the Lord, he will strengthen your heart. If you keep your focus on Jesus, he will strengthen your heart. If you remain faithful, he will strengthen your heart. He will strengthen your heart. Keep praying. He will strengthen your heart. Keep walking in godly fellowship. He will strengthen your heart. Just worship him in spirit and in truth. Remaining obedient and he will strengthen your heart. Just cling to the king. No matter what you're going through, cling to the king. What they say, cling to the king. If you're broken, cling to the king. If they're lying on you, cling to the king. If they're talking about you behind your back, cling to the king. Just ask the savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is able. Just ask him. The doors of the church are open. Yes. Yes. 